Hi there. In uh, this video, I'm just going to show you all about the REST API, the REST interface. You may have, you may have heard it um, mentioned in, in, in sort of documentation and um, may, maybe you're a developer um, who wants to get into the sort of GIS or ArcGIS specifically, REST API. Uh, maybe you just want to um, just understand how it fits together with, with, with the GIS uh, platform, what, what, what you actually use REST for, um, or whatever really, whatever the reason. I mean, it's uh, um, I'm going to be fairly high level at this, but I will be showing you how to use REST to bring data into Excel. Um, and I'll be bringing data into Excel from um, ArcGIS Online. So I'll be showing how that sort of works. So, uh, and, and just um, on, on one aspect of security, of the tokens and I will kind of just briefly mention tokens now and again there's actually a uh, another video on tokens just to um, clarify how that all hangs together so rest well um, rest API it's an API application programming interface it's, ju it's just a defined set of rules and and it just helps the programmer um, the developer communicate with some endpoint with some platform so on the left here, you can see you might have just a browser or Excel or Python code or MuleSoft, which is a sort of orchestration interfacing um, bit of the stack um, and, and dot, 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 lots of other programming languages, all kinds of uh, um, clients, wh whatever they are. Uh, but the point is you have this sort of defined standard in re request and, and REST endpoints are defined. In, um, in my example, it will all be ArcGIS Online. Um, so I'm going to be showing you ArcGIS Online, um, but the, the the kind of the framework I'm talking about works exactly the same for ArcGIS Server, for ArcGIS Enterprise um, Portal. It's exactly the same. Um, there's some um, when I say exactly the same. There's a few differences in what you can retrieve back um, in terms of the parameters of the REST URL, but but uh, that'll that'll make make sense as I. Um, go through this, but I'm mainly going to be I, I'm going to be focused on Arches Online. That's the key point here. So you send a request, it's formatted in a particular way, and then it comes back as a response in in various. Um, you can set what kind of response you want it to come back as JSON, PJSON, which is sort of pretty format, um, GeoJSON, HTML, um, a map, or, or whatever. There's there's lots of parameters there for for the output type. So that's the sort of overview. So like I said, so I'm going to be doing sort of browser to ArcGIS Online. And then in the final um, little bit of the video, it'd be Excel to ArcGIS Online. So it's mainly that sort of top bit. What I have here is a um, single feature in this feature service. Uh, which is called Triple SIs. Their sites a special sort of scientific interest. It's free data. It's open data. So um, um, I, I've, I've put a sample of it, not 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 the whole lot, into um, ArcGIS Online. If we go to, go to ArcGIS Pro for a moment, so here we are in ArcGIS Pro, and actually that same layer, that's this, um, this one, sites of special scientific interest in England. So if I zoom out, you can see these, all these sort of polygons um, uh, defined as triple SIs in, in England. Now, what I want to do, the purpose of this exercise is to say, I've got an XY location. I want to know from the XY location, what triple SI that point sort of intersects with, or, you know, it's within what polygon, that sort of thing. So it's a geometry, um, sort of operation there. Uh, but as you can see, it's, it's easy enough in ArcGIS Pro or some kind of client that maps things and, and I can just click. And when I click, I can see, um, oh, it's Windsor Forest and Great Park. And there's all my attributes, lots of attributes there. So this point, this XY point is what I'm going to be using as my example, which is a, uh, a ordnance survey um, set of coordinates on the British National Grid. And, and so we can see quite clearly kind of what the answer is already. But I don't, I, like I said, I don't want to see this answer as a map or anything. So if I just reduce that again, in, I could open the map viewer and look up stuff, but I want to actually 
sort of talk to this data set directly through uh, the browser or code and ultimately by Excel. So when, when you have a layer in ArcGIS Online, and this, this like, like I said, it goes for ArcGIS Server as well. Um, there's just a few you know, differences in parameters, that's all. But when you've got a, um, a layer like this, a feature service, you can see it's a feature service because down there it says source feature service. And in that feature service is just my sample triple SI polygon layer. That's all it is. So I know a lot about this already. I, I know about this layer. And that's a key thing about using REST. You really, need to, you really need to know your data, although there are tools for you to find out about the data. So when I, when I click on source here, feature service, you can see in the bottom left of my browser window, there's a link. And as soon as I click, so now it's brought up a whole load of sort of metadata, lots of information. We'll go, go through some of this another time. But the point is it's got lots of um, information about this feature service, which contains this one layer sample triple SI. So let's just click on that triple SI. So this is kind of REST um, interrogation to the API. I'm interrogating the REST interface. And I'm doing that by this, this big URL here at the top, which I could copy and paste into my code and off we go. There is this token equals bit, and that's to do with security, and I'll come back to that, okay? But you can take this whole thing um, and put it into your code and execute it. One, um, the, the main thing about this is you can see all the attributes. So I now know how this feature, uh, this layer and this feature service is made up, and I'm particularly interested in triple SI name. Lots of other fields, lots of other attributes, but it's only triple SI name because I want to know what is the triple SI at this given location X and Y. Now with this REST interface, one of the things you'll you'll see here um, when you immediately click on it, and you'll get this sort of thing if you click the same in ArcGIS Server as well, uh, you'll see at the bottom uh, the supported operations. So these are all the REST operations that are available. So I can query and do lots of other things, but um, let's just do query because again, that's what I'm interested in. Now, when I click query, it actually presents you with a form to kind of type stuff in. The and you can go off and fill in that form at will, and that will help you sort of create your um, this URL that's going to be your your uh, sort of building block for REST API in your Python code or MuleSoft or, or, or Excel or whatever it is. So this page here is a good way of um, uh, testing your sort of REST API call because this will prove whether or not it works and you get the right answers and also how to construct it. So let's just just take all this and copy it first of all. And I'm just going to go to Notepad++. There's one I did earlier. So I've pasted it in. Um, let's ignore that line for the moment. And you can see that to get to that page is a fair bit of a URL. Now I mentioned previously about tokens. Uh, and in fact, Tokens are all to do with security. How can I see, how can I get to this data? Well, I can get to this data because if you look here, it's shared as public. If I edit that, if you look, this is everyone. This is an open data set. Because it's open, I've made it a completely open. It's free data, so I've made it available to everybody and anyone. Therefore, the token aspect of the REST API, which is a security key. It's a method of authentication, approving sort of who you are and you've got the rights to see this data. That is not needed actually in this. So if I go back to my URL, this big, big URL here, I can get rid of all this, all that token stuff. And then I could copy it, have a new tab, browse, enter the URL, and bang, I'm in. So you see, I've, I've dropped the token bit. 
So I'm going to mention, like I said, I'm going to mention token now and again because it is it is an important thing. But actually, in my example in Arctus Online, I've made it open and public, so the token is not needed in this in this aspect. Um, you can use it, but the uh, thing is with the token as well, it has an hour of life, I think it is, and then it runs out. But let's get let's get back to this well, the issue the query in hand. So I've got I'm, I've now got to this um, HTML page. So let's um, put my input geometry. Well, my location four nine two six five one comma one seven four 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 five nine. So that's my input geometry of interest. Let's just go back to ArcGIS Online. See, that's that. And by the way, I found that and sort of put a little graphic on there in case you don't know. You just click on go to XY and then you um, set this to whatever your system is. So I'm in meters and then just type in the X and Y. And on this bit at the end, you can set what, what you how you want it to appear, just sort of flash or place a point or do an icon. That, that's how I did that, just, just so you know. So, but I've got these coordinates and I know it's in this polygon. So I know for a fact um, there, there, it is sort of real. Um, so, um, so I've always already proven this in the GIS client itself, but now I want to do this in a, in a REST client, which is actually in this case, the, the browser, and it's just far enough a query to this feature service, which is called sample triple SI. So there's my input geometry. Uh, what is it? Well, actually it's a point, just to be clear. My system, my reference, sorry, is to 7700. That's the ordinates of a British National Grid uh, coordinate system. You're starting at the bottom left of the UK at zero, zero and ending up at the top at a million, million or whatever it is. I haven't got that far yet. Um, and the spatial relationship, well, it can be intersects. You can, you know, is it within and, but intersects is perfectly decent. Um, but because I'm actually going to put a um, distance sort of tolerance of 100 meters. So what I'm saying there is within 100 meters of that point, am I hitting a triple SI? That's what I'm saying. I can change the units um, if I like. Um, I can return the geodetic information. To have a play with, with a lot of these others. I'm not going to go through all of them. You, you, you have a play and, and see what happens. I'll get you sort of basically up and running. So, um, but you have to imagine what you're doing here is helping, you, it's helping you construct the query that's going to appear at the top here. It's going to fill in all the parameters for you. So this is why this is really uh, very useful. So what are the outfields? Well, if I put a star in there, it's going to return everything. So let's do that first. Am I interested in geometry? I'm not. I'm only interested in the attributes of the data. Forget the geometry, or else I'm just going to come back with a load of coordinates, a um, big array of coordinates filling the screen. Not interested in centroid. Uh, forget that. Forget that. Um, there's various precision status, what data you may want to use. This is all, you know, have a play. It's not valid for this exercise. Um, what I could do is. Um, I could do things like return distinct values. We'll come, that, that's a useful one. Um, I could order, and where there's statistics involved, I could do some grouping. But I'm not really bothered about the rest of it, and I'm just going to return back in HTML. But you can see there are others, and I'll and I'll show you the difference. So I'm going to return sort of back in HTML my response. So all I'm saying is this coordinate, it's a point. It's this this reference. Does it intersect anything? With sample triple SI in any shape or form, bring back all the fields. Go get it. So I click get. It'll take a moment. Interestingly, no results found. Oh, God. Okay, so I accidentally typed in one more for them than, <laughs> than needed. Uh, the, 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 the coordinates are six, dig, uh, six digits each in, in British Nash Grid. I had an extra four in there, it's a slight slip of the finger. But um, what, what that does show you is that, you know, no results found. So you know for sure um, that that's a, um, that can't be true, that can't be true. So I've done something wrong and sure enough, I put in an extra four. So um, like I said, this is why this screen is, this form is really useful. So now I'll run it, I'll go get it. And now let's see what happens. And sure enough, we've got what we want. We've got the full response in a sort of textual, um, 
this textual display, this little kind of HTML um, table thing um, with its unique um, ID there, which is like an object ID you'd have in a shape file sort of thing. Um, and, and so it's brought it all back. Okay, so, and you know, look at the top here in this URL, look how, look how it's sort of grown and become um, all the info that you need. I'm going to slightly alter this actually because I want to tidy it up. I want it just the triple SI underscore name. I know it's called that because we, we can see it in here, you see? So we could um, triple SI name, actually it's this I area. Let's bring back the name in the area um, and then let's do a get. So now you'll see we'll get the name in the area. So you see how easy it is to configure this. Um, but actually, um, let's uh, uh, yeah, let, let's let's leave that. I don't think I want to do anything more. Um, so if it came back with more than one, you know, maybe it's a multi polygon, maybe it's multi part polygon sort of thing. That's where you do return distinct values, and that would make sure that only one name came back because it might be the same name, but it's kind of for some reason, maybe the overlapping or something. I, I don't know. But if you want, if you just want to get it down to that. that, that distinct value then, then that's what you use. Okay so what does this all mean at the end of the day? Well this means we've proven we've got a good result. So let's now change the format of the output to JSON and fire it off. Okay so now we get something that that actually although it's not massively user friendly we can see the answer we can see the stuff triple SI name is in there uh, where's the answer in, in attributes you see so so in attributes that's our key that's the key bit you have to you have to remember that attributes that's where the answer is it's it's you know these these two is my answer from attributes so so given those coordinates th this is the answer now if we go to here and just copy the url let me go back to notepad plus plus which is a great tool if you know if you if you don't have it really you should uh, you should use it you can now see this whole mass of URL requ request. And these ampersands, these, are just splitting up all the different parameters that you need to answer your question. And actually, where where it's sort of blank, you, you don't need. So I could trim it down and just make it a bit more concise if I want to. I'm not using where, I'm not using that, I'm not using um, time, I am using geometry. Uh, let's scroll through a bit. Um, you see what I mean? I'm, I, I can tidy it up. So um, some things are uh, false by default, so you, pr you probably don't need them in there anyway. Um, but you see what I mean? I can go through and I'll, I'll just leave the rest actually. Notice our token is blank and we don't actually even need that at the end. So let's. So I can trim it if I want. I can tidy it up a bit, but I'll, I'll leave it at the moment. I could get rid of uh, half of those probably at least. But I'm going to leave them for the moment because they're useful to leave in because then you may want to. Um, by editing change a few things. So now I've got this um, just this sort of trim down URL. Let, let's let's put it in another new tab. See what happens. Okay, so we got our answer. That's good. So what what do we kind of what what, what else what, what what can we do with this though? We've we've got an answer and and it and it it just pops up in a list in the browser. But if we go back to my PowerPoint you know yes one of the things is a browser and um and, and you could write your own code like python but let's say actually the key area of interest is excel how to get this answer into excel and all you could of course you can export data as a csv or whatever you can get it from your gis and import it but you, you know you, you may want a, a live link effectively to the data that refreshes um and 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 just brings it back exactly how it is on the server right now. Especially, you know, it's a better way anyway of centralizing your data and not having these sort of siloed data sets all over the place. So how, how do you bring this in? I've got this URL, okay. And where's my notepad? So that's that, all right. How does all that get into here? So you, um, in, your, in any worksheet, you go to data, it's already on it, um, data from web, it might be slightly different if you've got an older version. You may have to go to get data and do something else, but uh, th this is uh, pretty latest version, I think. Uh, data from web. 
Now I paste in the uh, sort of big um, URL. I'm going to, it does say pjson there, but I'm just going to ch change that to json. Um, because I think that it doesn't actually matter. Let me put that in. I've changed it to JSON and it should be a splurge. Yeah, there we go. So that's sort of, you know, the real sort of JSON, what it what it kind of looks like. And when you put a P in front of JSON, it sort of prettifies it and, and you know, makes it a bit bit more fancy. Uh, just so you know, there's actually a GeoJSON as well. So you get this kind of thing, which is a slightly sim uh, simpler construct so um, structure so that's geojson so there's actually quite a few and i'll put the links to the um uh to, to where you get this information from from the documentation i'll put the links in the description so you'll, you'll see all the options I, I can't go through them all in this one video so I press ok so so what happens is that it, 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 yes it looks all a bit complicated so, but the point is it's got the data it's got it it's it's picked up for example um the fact that there was a um, polygon uh, query going on and it's pick, pick the, picked up the fact that there's a list of, of features that's returned it's only got one in but it is a is a list so it it knows what it's doing so if i click on that i immediately get this idea uh it, it kind of goes down it drills down and and now it shows uh i I've, I've got this record um a list that contains um, records um, but uh, we can't see it at this stage we all we see is a record so we know it's got a record it's got a um, some values in there if you click on this and say to table it'll then effectively don't worry there are no delimiters as such um, just just go for it so we've got this table and we've got a record but we want to drill down and to see uh, what the sort of data is underneath so if you right hand click and click on drill down we've now got our attributes field that is our attributes section that's what we're interested in that's the data we want to pick up right down you know we're digging we're walking through digging right into the data and it's attributes that's of interest so now we can say into table and now you've broken it into table it's actually um, given us uh, more um, capability more functionality to uh, access the data and load it in and if you click on expand you'll actually see your layers listed so press ok and now you can see there's the name and there's the area once you're kind of finished with that you can say close and load and because we've, we've got we can hide the column now we can do do whatever we can remove them um, or we can do this because it's going to be a table in Excel so um, but if we just get it into Excel now this close and load we can close and load and it goes straight in or we can close and load two and we can sort of pinpoint where how it's going to be uh, inputted new worksheet a particular existing worksheet you see I've got my cursor on a3 well, why not set it as a3 so it's going to start there press ok getting external data and and there we are there, and there we are a table in excel and you see here it's it's built this um the, the, there's a sort of new area in excel um that it's opened up which is all about queries and, and connections um and again that's an excel thing look up those videos i'm not going into much more of this now point is the data's in there and you can um, uh, see your data and use it as a normal Excel uh, uh, file. Okay, so we've got that and we can delete and work with it. Let's just go back to our builder of queries. It's got a few open here. Um, here it is. Um, one thing I might want to do actually is rather than do an intersect which is great but I'm, I just may want to bring back all the triple SIs all the names into Excel so I'm on I'm obviously looking at this sample SSI actually it's, it is a sample it's not not a whole of England uh, and Scotland and Wales but the um, I'll set return geometry to false there 
but what I'll do is I'll just bring back everything with a very simple straightforward query. So now I know I've got a unique identifier called FID so I'm just going to say greater than zero. Note you can in the where, where clause sort of put together some sort of SQL like you know SSI name equals whatever and you can put it in there but, uh, so I could just do SSI name equals Windsor and whatever and bring back that one record but I, but I actually want to bring back all and um, there's no thing about geometry going on here it's just FID is greater than zero and I want to bring back just SSI name only Here we go. so now we're going to get I think it's over 200 or something you see how we've got them but note the uh, because it's multi-part polygon going on um, it's brought back multiple names there so I would turn distinct on return distinct values true and get and now get a simple list that's great in JSON looks good done my test let's grab the um, URL go back to Excel do a data get from web paste it in uh, it's got the token on here I'm gonna get rid of that token see the token will time out um, I'll, I'll be showing that in another video because this is public data uh, I'll leave it as pjson this time it doesn't matter so here we go so features so drill down we can um, turn to tables which do table except defaults um, we can drill down into attributes and stuff uh, so we've got 226 items we can convert to table um, again and then click attributes make sure attributes is selected and now this is loaded with uh, everything from the list that, uh, that's in attributes but it's only SSI name and there it is SSI name and there we go close and load close and load do let's put it into this 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 spreadsheet here so um, uh, existing at uh, let's put it at 12 press ok and there we go all the SSIs from that feature service um, uh, from that's with that that live service so once the um, and, and the, all, all the ones I've done you, there's a little button here saying refresh and actually when you I think when you save and then reopen the worksheet it'll um, uh, reload it it'll re refresh it anyway but um, this isn't Excel and get data from web video there's there's a few of those out there so the point is Excel now has data uh, from Arches Online which is the same as like I said it just follows the same pattern as, uh, as um, Arches Server um, so you can apply it to both so I hope you find that, that useful thank you very much